Well, heavyweight stepping into the ring, Jesse Boston from Trent, New Jersey, against a gentleman from Zambia in Africa, Josie. Joseph Jin Zinjungu as Jin Dungu. Did you take a look at him? He's 7-1 coming to the action here today for round number one of a schedule eight-rounder. And Boston is going to be quite a challenge for him. He's only 6-2-1. But despite the fact he said he has not had a fight in quite a while, he did come back in April and quickly dispensed of Tony Williams. And feels like he may be back in the groove of making a little bit of note here. Now in the heavyweight division, both these guys normally are cruiserweights. Jin Gungu normally fighting right around the 190, but has stepped up to 196, which is 88 and 9 in kilograms at 204, 92 and 5 for Boston today. And Boston's come out in the right-handed stance, Sam. Uh, he oftentimes fights as a southpaw. He can go both ways. He's going to try to confuse Joseph Jin Gungu coming out with the one and then switching up on him later in the fight, I'm quite sure, because he's, he's a cutie. Jin Gungu trained by Harold Bulbrick in this corner, Malcolm Garrett as well. And it'll be interesting to see what they do pick up between rounds because Jin Gungu is a fighter that is very apt at adapting to whatever style he has to fight. He'll bang with you or he'll stand outside and box. Right now he's trying to figure out Boston here in round one. He's got to press Jesse Boston here. He can't stand on the outside and box with him, Sam. That, that's suicide for him. He's just, he's in with the slick boxer. He's going to shift on the outside, box. He can fight from the inside. You tuck his chin down low between his shoulders. He's a hard guy. You've got to force this guy to fight to get him into some exchanges. That's what Joseph's got to do. He's got to pressure this guy. He can't stand on the outside and box with him. He'll get countered all night. You also have been seeing here in round number one a good left hook being thrown by Boston. That time he lunged with a straight right hand. Chingangu was able to step away from it. Boston again, you can see that he is very apt at being a stalker. And Chingangu must be aware of that fact as he tries to inch his way in now. Come on, man, work. Come on. The slow labor is pace is, is favors Jesse Boston in this fight. Joseph's got to get in his behind. I know that he, you know, with coming into the ring once and then uh, going back again, he's probably not warmed up the way he'd like to be, but he's got to press this guy. He's got to force him to fight. This guy's going to stand on the outside here and shift his weight and monkey shine on him all day. That's what he needs to do. Walk to him with the jab, just like he's trying to do now, Joseph. I'm sure that's what Harold's going to tell him in between rounds. Boston, the older of the two, at 29, Jim Gungu at 24. And of course, the duration of Boston during this fight. How much will be Jim Gungu to wear it down? You see the big punches thrown by Boston as they close in on the end of round number one. Joseph landed a great, clean, straight right hand on this guy. Boston immediately tried to jump back into an exchange. Boston and Joseph Chingungu, as you take a look at he along with his trainer, Aaron Goldberg over their corner right now, and both fighters are able to load up and throw some pretty good punches in round one. Chingungu loaded up that right hand as he punches over the top. Just misses there, but look at that left hand. Boy, did that come in there sweetly. Straight left landed nicely, and, and Jesse Boston tried to exchange with Joseph right here to get some respect back because he certainly got crushed with that left hand there from Joseph Jungungu at the end of the round, Sam. That was almost one of those replays that we saw him exchanging right hooks and almost knocked each other down. Good first round by Jesse Boston and Joseph Jungungu. Well, the fireworks have just begun in this heavyweight eight-round fight. Joseph Chingungu in the white trucks, Jesse Boston in the black with the red stripe, entertaining the crowd in round number one as they both threw some pretty good fireworks. Bob, how about your scorecard? Did one or the other get an advantage over the other in the first round? I gave Boston the first round based on the first two minutes and 50 seconds of the round. Obviously, the last 10 seconds belong to Joseph, and he expects to carry that on into the second round of this fight. He knows what he's got to do. He's got to close this fight and throw straight punches at Jesse Boston. So the old adage of the fighter sometimes is able to steal the round with a final punch. Oh, 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 oh
Clumsy adjustments are concerned. We anticipated that Harold Holbrook will be talking to Shingago in between rounds. What does he have to try to do other than what he was able to get away at the end of round one? Bob? Well, at the end of the round, he finally forced an exchange, which he needs to, he needs to back Boston up and roll to him with that good, strong jab. And his right here standing in the middle of the ring with him, which favors Boston. He needs to back him up, walk to him with the jab, and force exchange. Chicago, the top of the two, about two inches. Six months encouraging both to put in some more action in there for this phase. I mean, what happens to me in the first time? Don't just waltz around here and let's get something done. I'm sure I totally agree that our fight has to do that modern and just make an entertaining fight. No, really, it, it takes one guy out of doing what he wants to do, which is also wanting to slow down the pace of this fight. You pick your shot. Okay, kind of famous Joseph, but hey, people are paying, they're coming to see a fight, that's what they like to see. This Jim is starting to go to the corner right to try that in the final shoot. finally steps in and says, that's it, no more. Look at Boston throw those punches. Boston knew he had his man in trouble and a, and a lot of, a lot of punches like that would force the referee to come in and stop the fight. That's exactly what happened. Well, that's the way it ended. Here again is Michael Bucker with the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brian O'Millian stops about 2 minutes 43 seconds. Yeah, the winner. By TKO victory from Trooper, New Jersey, Jesse Austin. Austin has a 7-2-1 one record right now, but his third knockout has shown that as a heavyweight or a cruiserweight, he takes a punch in this game. That's what my man's going to be on. He's going to be on. 